forgot to charge my laptop before I came up, and so I barely had enough time to do what I needed to do, and then it died. This is the visitor center. Chamber of Idaho City Chamber of Commerce. They are the um, ones with the booster. All right, let's roll. Still snow up on the highest mountains over there. One of the reasons I wanted to come up here this weekend was to go check out Bald Mountain in Thorn Creek Butte, but there, it's still snow up there, so I'm gonna skip that route. Another one I want to check out that I came up a few years ago, but I didn't go all the way to see where it comes out at is Wildcat Gulch. Went hunting up that road one year. Didn't see anything, but kind of curious. I turned around and then came back and kind of curious. Oh, man, the burgers from that place smell really good right now. I'm going to have to come back to camp and make a burger. That sounds good. So no emergencies in the email. That's a good thing. There's this cop again. you got to make sure you're doing the speed limit. Or he'll, uh, he'll pop you hard big old ticket. Now, you guys think that cop's maybe, you think he's maybe fishing down over there somewhere? Super Trooper style? <laughs> awesome. Away we go. You know, it really is a blessing to be able to work from home and not have to report to anybody. I think I've said it before, but I just have a small uh, e-commerce web development company. I develop e-commerce websites. I worked at Hewlett Packard for eight years, and for the first four years, I worked on digital printing presses, doing research and development and quality assurance testing. Well, it was the research and development department. I was doing quality assurance testing. So I was just a grunt running test cases on the printing press. And it's about the size of a truck or so. It's, they're big printers. And we were in the process of building a new version of one and so HP had bought a company in Israel called Indigo. What's up, dudes? And so I got to go to Israel for a couple weeks during all of this adventure. That was, that was pretty cool. But the second four years that I worked there, I did... I was a build engineer. And basically what that is, is it's, it's a programming type of position and uh, basically what I would do is take the code from the programmers that, and there was probably, I don't know, anywhere from 40 to, I don't know, probably about 40 or so and then there was other groups in other places that were building different pieces of the software and so I, probably 100 developers in all and then I was kind of the middleman. I would take all of their code and compile it into an in installable, executable, you know, an install file, an exe file that you could install on the printing press and run it. And and then I would pass that nicely packaged install file over to the quality assurance team, which I used to work with, and they would take it and install it and run all the test cases and tell the report back you know, through a 
some bug tracking software, all of the findings, all the different bugs that they found, and they would try and go through and re see if they could, uh, you know, mark old bugs resolved and stuff like that. And so I did that, and I, I kind of made a mistake when I was working in that job, I think, because I, I automated the whole entire process. So everything from grabbing the code off of the development of the developer machine and compiling it and which to some degree it's that's normally automated that's the normal thing but I kind of took it to a new level and it was basically push a button and it would build the software and email it to the quality assurance team so I really wasn't doing much the only the only thing left to do was just to schedule that process instead of hitting the button so that it would just do it on its own and of course if there was ever any issues or problems then I would be a good guy to fix that but it was running pretty smooth and so when layoffs came through I had been to HP for about eight years at that point and uh, I got moved I kind of got pump faked my my manager kind of offered me this other position in a different uh, group doing the same thing build engineer but different software it was for laser jet printers and and then I think he was knowing that he did that knowing that that job was going to end really soon and and it did and so I left and and uh, started this e-commerce development company and I, I call it a company but it's just a sole proprietorship no big deal but it it's uh it's done really well. Uh grace and grace be to God or praise be to God for that because he uh he keeps me busy and keeps work coming and keeps it going. So uh all the thanks to to him for that. Uh I don't do anything. I'm just I'm just pushing buttons. <laughs> So, so that's what I do, and it is a real blessing to be able to do that because then I can come do things like this. I can come out here and bring my camper and my laptop with me, and if I can camp in a place that has internet access, I can stay there indefinitely. But uh, I gotta have, I gotta go, <laughs> I gotta get my kids every once in a while, so I gotta stay on that schedule too. But. There's a couple of weeks a month where I can get away and uh, not have to, and just work and not out of the camper and ride and explore. And so that's kind of the goal for this summer is to go set up shop with the camper in a couple of different places and, uh, and just explore those areas while I'm not working. So. I'm really interested if you if any of you guys are local here in the Idaho area and you know of of good campgrounds that actually have cell phone service. I don't really like campgrounds, but tell I want to I want to hear about like uh boondocking places where there's you're not paying to camp. I I don't like I don't pay to camp. I don't like that. That's why I put the solar on and you know all that stuff so I don't need hookups. So, but if you know of any places like uh, awesome campsites that are, you know, uh, big enough campsites where I could get in, I think my train is is like, I don't know, it's probably 30, 40 feet long. But if I can get in and out and pull through into a place and it has cell phone coverage, uh, I'd like to hear about it. Absolutely, let me know. I would be greatly greatly appreciative to hear about some more places because I really only know about one and that is up almost to Cascade and you take a ride on Clear Creek and you go back up into the mountains up in there and there's camp spots up in there and I don't know how but they actually have cell phone service so I'm able to work back in there and camp and I wish I was up there right now but I had some other plans that, that and that kind of didn't work out. So if you watched part one of this 
series, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The Verizon coverage map lied. Liars. It actually wasn't Verizon's coverage map. It was some other website. I don't know where they get their data, but they were showing like three antennas up there in Idaho City, and there's not one. So don't go to that website, whatever it was. It was like the third or fourth one in the search results for Verizon coverage map. Oh, what a beautiful day. Some clouds here and there. River's flowing good from the snow melt off. Probably about 60 degrees. Beautiful. <laughs>